Beautiful. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to today's Hyperledger Supply Chain Special Interest Group uh, webinar uh, here, the second for uh, 2020. Uh, today, we have Marina and Luca from Surge Tech over in Italy, right? Where, you'll tell us where in Italy you are, you guys uh, work, uh, probably virtually like the rest of us here. Uh, they're going to present their uh, solution based on Hyperledger uh, here for the fashion industry. So with that, uh, I shared with uh, Marina and Luca that we go an hour and uh, 20, 30 minutes of presentation. She'll probably say she's open for questions along the way. So you're welcome to do that. You good with that, Marina? Yes, absolutely. Okay, beautiful. So um, Marina, well, we'll turn it over to you and uh, you and Luca and let's roll. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Hyperledger, for this beautiful opportunity. We are so excited to be part of uh, Hyperledger community. And um, I will present myself uh, shortly. My name is Marina Richard, and I'm a co-founder of uh, Surge uh, Company. Today with me, I have uh, Luca Ferrari and his um, proud owner. Let's start our presentation. I already shared my screen, so we can uh, just start. I'll start. Uh, saying a few uh, words about, about our company. So company um, is based in Bologna. It's Italy uh, um, town, a uh, beautiful town, by the way. <laughs> I think uh, that's we, where the oldest university in the world is, right, Bologna? Yes, Correct. yes. There you go, that's claim to fame. Great, Tom. <laughs> and uh, we created this company uh, in uh, 2018. Uh, just from the beginning, we started uh, working remotely, so we can say that our company is absolutely uh, COVID resi uh, resi resilient. And uh, so the fourth one was the idea to, to bring an international team based mostly in Europe, working everybody like remotely from, from just from the start. And uh, we used um, Hyperledger Fabric to create um, an enterprise solution. Our main client is... Uh, Caring Eyewear. Uh, this company uh, works uh, in field of uh, luxury goods, and um, our product is running. Um, so we. Wait, what's the name of the company? Have, your main client? Caring. Caring Eyewear. Uh, they are um, producing. They are designing and uh, re and uh, retailing um, eyewear. So okay, like got it. Cheap, okay, so they'd be a competitor uh, to Lux Adiga. Yes. Okay. I think that everyone knows like uh, Gucci sunglasses and. <laughs> good, good, that, that's good. We're, we're, we're very interested in real life stories. So that's great that you have a client that's using it. Yeah, this is a complete real life story with up and downs, but uh, uh, with beautiful end. So um, many companies uh, are using our solutions and um, the this the we because of our solution we had a great uh, support uh, of our um, investors so we are really happy to see that more than 20 companies are using uh, this solution so what was the point um looking at today's supply chains we can see that they are quite complex and they are a lot of requirements, um, compliance and regulatory. I think nightmare of everybody working on supply chain. And the main problem is the fact that uh, companies are keeping their data separated, isolated from other uh, players in supply chains. So from the other side, there is uh, the blockchain technology, uh, which gives um, huge opportunities uh, for different ways to, to collaborate. Um, and looking at this, uh, our idea was the possibility to enrich uh, blockchain technology and to make solution which can um, help the companies to, to collaborate uh, in, um, in a new way. So um, the, the our um, solution is a uh, front software in, it is, and it's all about collaboration, connection, and integration. So for the first time, thanks to distributed ledger, these companies had the opportunity to share their data. Obviously, as people used to say, blockchain is not a solo flight. So 
first we need to uh, create a consortium, but then just starting with three companies, one which produced, produ uh, is producing lands, another uh, uh, acetates, and uh, the third one um, certification institute, we started uh, studying their processes, business processes, and uh, change them by, by different workflows, which uh, gave them um, more, more efficient collaboration. And then Surge um, is putting um, blockchain technology as a layer between companies and, and blockchains. So it's possible to make uh, uh, the source of true inside the blockchain. And um, by building that, in the end, we are able to have a digital passport of a product. So product came, came in the first place, in the center. And this is the, 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 our result. This is a result of, our, of this collaboration because every single company has his own front and our solution is like blockchain um, as a service. So it's running on cloud and uh, on subscription. It's not, uh, doesn't need any, any implementation. So um, the fact is that every company is giving uh, their part of, of data and uh, certificates, or they, they can upload um, tons of, of documents um, there. So the, that's the, the, the main goal, that's the main result. And why? First of all, because we live in the world where consumers are more, uh, more let's say, um, demanding. Yes. And the second thing that is that uh, companies, they can really communicate their values, uh, their effort and their social responsibility. For, for example, caring, um, thanks to, to, to Front, uh, this year uh, could calculate their uh, environmental profit and loss, uh, monetary value, uh, because they are, they are really uh, sensitive about uh, these, um, these, these themes. So for them, for the first time, it was possible to have some information about their eyewear that they couldn't have in different way without mapping this supply chain. So by mapping the supply chain, changing workflows and process, uh, businesses process, um, and by helping companies to collaborate, in the end, we have the possibility to have every possible document uh, certificate and um, let's say uh, asset that we need uh, for analysis, for giving uh, some some messages as a company, and um, it, it's really a nice nice story. So this is from my side. I hope that I was clear. Just I'm here if you want to ask me something more about uh, this uh, case study. Uh, we will proceed with uh, okay. more technical details about solutions. Okay, so thank you, thank you, Marina. And um, let me say that as, as Marina said, uh, we have this idea, this vision of putting the product at the center. Okay, so our core idea is uh, let's put the product at the center and let's ask everybody involved in the supply chain to collaborate. And what happens is that by this, uh, idea, we can implement different solutions. So most of the companies now are doing POCs, pilots for track and trace. This is one of the things we may do, but it's uh, in reality is much wider what we can achieve with, with this kind of solution. The first thing is, is the one that Marina was, was mentioning. So creating this digital ID, digital passport of a product, a very sophisticated one, managing data and documents for every type of merchandise, uh, thanks to collaboration through the supply chain. So all companies who collaborate across several tiers of the supply chain can provide their data, their documents, their information, which gets aggregated in one single place. Another example is a simple track and trace. I won't, I won't comment too much about that because I mean, there are probably 1 million case studies over the internet and, uh, and the, Another type of business solution is the one Marina was mentioning, compliance and sustainability. So uh, we, can ask and we can ask companies to provide any type of information such as composition of a specific, of a specific product 
And through this, uh, we can have information such as the country of origin of uh, components of uh, things that are maybe just a uh, part of what we sell to the market. So suppose it's packaging, uh, we can have the provenance of the of the carton that was used uh, uh, to make the packaging or of any other uh, animal fiber or so on, or, or like that, or even uh, asking um, compliance, compliance things like, for example, certificates. And <clears throat> so this is a this is type of business solutions we, we have implemented and we can do with our solution. Uh, Mari, if you can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. And what are the benefits we, we expect? The first one is to reduce time to market. Um, what happens in most supply chains is that uh, uh, information has to go when you release a new product through several tiers of supply chain. So maybe you sell the product to the market, but you have a supplier that is doing something. And this supplier is working with their suppliers and those suppliers are working with different companies providing raw materials, components, and so on. And many times when the new design is made, unless you are Airbus or Boeing or a super large multinational, you don't have such a system, such a very powerful PLM where all the different tiers of the supply chain are collaborating. And so what happens is that at the end of the day, uh, because of versioning, because of changes in the design of the product, uh, and, and so the supply chain may end up in a situation of a, a lack of alignment. So someone may be on version one, while others are maybe on version three at the end of the day, when the final assembly happens, uh, simply components do not fit. And uh, <clears throat> asking everybody to collaborate, we can, uh, we can be sure that the co products at the end of the day are more compliant. Um, uh, we can also reduce, uh, reduce really cost because it's uh, much easier to put together information and documents about a specific product and also improve margins because that, because companies across the supply chain become more efficient so they can save time they were spending just to upload and download Excel files, PDF documents, images, uh, making sure certifications were there because they just have to go point and click and find the, find the document. Then we have also uh, a screenshot of how the application looks like and how easy it is to retrieve the information. Uh, Mari, next slide, please. So this is an example of a thing that we have uh, done in reality. This is for traceability of, um, of eyewear, as Marina was saying. So we have moved across several layers of the supply chain, moving from uh, the, the product itself uh, to the um, companies who actually manufacture it to the suppliers of raw materials and components and to, um, and to certification authorities. And this uh, enables uh, uh, at the end of the day, the distributor to have in one place all the information, be it technical data, uh, be it documents uh, and, and so on. Um, next slide, please. Another example was a study uh, we did uh, for track and trace for leather for leather goods. Uh, this is something probably everybody everybody has is is quite familiar with. So it's not different. Uh, what is different is uh, the way we implement it that we are going to see in a second. Uh, next slide, please. And this is just uh, a graphical uh, explanation of how logically the solution may work. So suppose you have an wholesaler or a real retailer uh, working with three tiers of a supply chain. Uh, we can enable workflows and data and data processes, data exchange, document exchange across all those tiers. We can also enable, uh, thanks clearly to blockchain technologies, uh, workflows. Uh, wait a second, please. Workflows which uh, which uh, end up uh, uh, end up being exclusively of, uh, for example, tier two and tier three, which do not involve, for example, the uh, the final wholesaler. So companies get enabled and they can also do. Uh, things which are not connected to the to the final product or to the final uh, to the final merchandise. Um, Luca, can I ask a question here on this? Sure. So, so what you're saying, and I'm going back a couple of charts. It sounds like either you can have folks directly put data into this solution, or if it's already in some existing environment, some with database, whatever, or set of systems, yeah. TMS or WMS, etc. You can you can pull it out of there should should the uh, need yes. be. Yes. Okay. The, exactly. This is exactly what we do. So 
uh, every company has information in their systems. As you were saying, we can take it from there, put it in the solution. It gets aggregated in one single place, uh, which at the end of the day gets aggregated to the final product in a standard scenario. And then it is uh, available for the final for the final distributor or, uh, or retailer. And the additional benefit is that all the companies involved in, in the supply chain get a benefit from this because they have access to the system and they can clearly see uh, the data they are allowed to see. So it's, uh, there is a strong security implemented, but suppose there is something that is relevant for a, a company that is in uh, tier two, that it comes from a company that, that is in tier three, they can get it uh, right away because so, so, everybody has access. So let me ask you a, a different question here. I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm a big fan of standards. Uh, we have some folks on the line here are also big fans of standards. Do you use a standard method or do you normalize it within your environment or how do you get everybody okay. on a similar page on a, of a data model? And then okay. you know, idea, my ideal world, I'd love a process model. <laughs> yeah, this is an excellent question. This, this goes directly back to data and the worldwide standards that we have in 2021. So if there is something like UPC provided by GSI, GS1, yes, we use it. If there is an ISO standard, like for country, for country codes, Yes, we use it. Same for currencies and, and so on. Then there are some business domains which are very, very, very specific to the industry. And in that case, we need to do data modeling because there are some things that we end up uh, finding out that do not uh, even have any kind of taxonomy in the business. So we, we need to do that. So to get back to the point, yes, whenever there is a standard, there is a global standard, we, we use it. like. Uh, we will see it in a second, uh, the way the, the code that we use to um, basically present eyewear is the UPC or EAN, depends on the way uh, the companies want to use the layout of their screenshot of their, of their dashboards. Uh, in some other cases, we are not that lucky and we have to do data modeling because international standards are not there. And Great, in thank addition, you. And in addition to this, uh, whenever there is something which we cannot directly refer to an international standard, um, like a unit of measure, as we were saying, or a country code or a currency, um, then what we do is that in the product, we have a data layer which does conversion. So we define what is the gold standard for, the, for, that, specific, for that specific industry, and everything gets converted to that, to that gold standard that becomes the standard of uh, everybody when working in the when working in the in the system okay so uh, thank you for the question by the way uh, so, so this is a very simply how, how the final result looks like so it's a very simple dashboard it's a web 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 uh, web interface uh, what the users get is uh, this super rich dashboard where as we were saying uh, the typical implementation is the final product is uh, actually uh, an aggregator of all the information that is provided by every company. So in production, like for this specific dashboard, uh, I don't know how many columns we are managing. Um, I don't know, it could be even more than 100. There is, there, are, there is very sophisticated management of the aggregation of columns and of sections of the product. Because, uh, because clearly the information as, as you go up the supply chain and you integrate layers and layers gets very, very, very rich and uh, end up, ends up also in a uh, uh, bill of material concepts and, and so on. But for the user, then it's so easy. So they need a specific certificate for that specific product. They just put a filter, go to the specific column, click a link and they can get the document in a very simple way or if they need data, they can quickly export it to Excel. We are also integrated with uh, business objects uh, for, for, for data analysis. And uh, Mari, if you can go to the next slide, please. We also, what we also do is uh, document management. So there is very strict interconnection between the product and the documents related to it. And we also, in some cases, uh, do some sophisticated document management with versioning and uh, expiration dates, depends on the type of document 
and um, and on the business and on the business requirement. But what I want to what I want to convey is basically this message of this ability to use blockchain and our technology as a very big way to aggregate information and put it in a synergic way uh, and present it in a synergic way to the to the to the final user and to the customer. And um, I, I mean, sometimes uh, um, being, a, let's say, <laughs> uh, clearly using a, a big example, uh, but I think it's it's good to use big examples. I, I try to give the message that this is a bit the sales force. Uh, what we want to do is the sales force of products. OK, so as Salesforce has the message of customer centricity, we give the message of product centricity. Uh, but product centricity is more complex. It's more complex because the product data is a result of a collaboration of many, many companies. And so I think blockchain has enabled this, this concept and we are trying really to achieve that and to go in that direction. Uh, Mari, if you can move to the next slide. Yes, absolutely. I would just like to add that um, we apply this solution to uh, eyewear industry, luxury industry, but it's absolutely uh, easy to, to apply it to other type of uh, industries like automotive or food and beverage. So that's also the, the, um, the, the opportunity to use this uh, solution everywhere in every industry where there, there are uh, complex supply chains, complex process, something to, to change and to, to make a possible a different way to collaborate. Thank you. Let's move on to the next page. I think that we're going to have also some technology at some point, if I remember the presentation. Here we are. OK, <laughs> yes. OK. Uh, Be the before we works. go there, before they go there, Luca, let's yes. just give folks an opportunity if they want to buzz in here. We'll, we'll give them uh, 15 seconds and see what Absolutely. questions they might have on the business solution side. I, go ahead, folks. I have one question. Can you hear me? Go ahead. So, yeah. um, so, so the mapping. What what are your solutions to mapping? Uh, yeah, basically, what we do, as I was mentioning before, is that we have an integrated mapping layer, which does basically the following: whenever there is uh, whenever there is uh, uh, an international standard, we take data from the systems of the different companies and we map it to the international standard. Suppose someone is using a country code that is not compliant with the ISO format, we, we, we map it. And we map it in our, uh, let's say, integration layer, which is uh, very light middleware. While, right. uh, while if there is no international standard we, that we can use, um, then we do mapping across our, uh, against our libraries. Uh, there is a very powerful business concept in, a, in the system that is the library concept that is uh, like the jargon, the vocabulary of the application for every field that is structured. So that is not a comment, for example. So we use a, we we have this uh, powerful business tool that we call libraries, and in the integration layer, right. whatever what we do is we map every every data against the library. So every company working inside right. the system for a specific field will always work with the library item. Right. Yes. So you have you have the you have the library in a database, and you yeah. use shapefile you use shape files yeah. to to drive correct. to drive the technology. Yeah. Geospatial. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. It just let me uh, since you said something, and I want just to uh, give you a, to be a little bit more precise. What we do not keep libraries in a database. Uh, this our solution has no database uh, apart from the blockchain and for caching. So what we do is we keep it in GitHub and we have Redis to do like the caching and the integration. Uh, the reason for this is that because we don't want to have anything persistent in our, in our software. So whatever data that is a business data is stored inside Hyperledger, whatever is uh, like uh, uh, functional to the application stays in GitHub, just to be more precise, okay? A private GitHub. Yeah, it's always private data, but it's managed, managed differently. So if it, is, uh, if it is technical to the application, like a library, it stays in GitHub. If it is a business data, like, uh, like a data about a frame or a weight or anything like that, it stays in Hyperledger. Right. Yes. And just to add, nice. uh, for people who doesn't um, know this uh, concept, let's say, 
from very beginning, we, we saw this problem because uh, if you think only about colors, every company is uh, calling colors in different way. For me, maybe for you is red, for other companies like Rosso or maybe uh, RX or something like that. So just for, <laughs> for the colors, it, it, it wasn't so, so simple. So we started thinking uh, immediately about, okay, how we can fix this. So the, the, the fact is that they're continuing uh, putting um, their their documents, their data as they ever uh, the, as they um, always did in the same way, and then then our system is is um, is doing the conversion. Yeah, is, yeah, is there to 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 change this? So they don't need to change the, their way to work, and that's that's a great thing for for companies because because they don't want to change their way to to do their business. Right. Good. Anybody else out there with any uh, questions? Uh, Hi, yes. Uh, this is Alicia. I have a question about something it's... Marina said earlier. Marina, you mentioned that the client can calculate the environmental profit and loss. Can you speak a little bit more to how they're doing that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. maybe, maybe, if you go, maybe if Maria. You go can... Website of uh, Caring. You can see how they calculate, like how, how it's possible to calculate all the, the monetary value of, uh, of um, profit and loss. But the fact is that for some components, for some uh, items, they are using like um, paper, which uh, is um, um, recyclable. okay? Yes, sorry, I, I don't have word now. And so, or maybe plastic, or uh, they want to, make sure that for some acetate, they use less water than past for years. Mm -hmm. So that's the way, by mapping supply chain, you can see on certificates, you can see on documents, how they make this product because otherwise you can't have these information from your suppliers. You can even ask them, I mean like how many, how many liter of, uh, liters of water you used for doing that? Like, uh, I don't know, I don't care, so. <laughs> In this way, it's possible to, to consult all, all these um, um, materials and to yeah. prove uh, their effort. It's not just a word, uh, we are a green company. No, we can show that by seeing what our suppliers and their suppliers do. Mm -hmm. Is there yeah. a third and, uh, party, is there anyone going in third party to audit to confirm the data that those third party suppliers and yeah. their suppliers? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yes. The um, the the, the inter yes. The internal uh, sustainability department of caring is mm -hmm. checking all that information. And Great. to be even even more precise about about what we do, uh, it gets a bit technical. But when you want to do the environmental profit and loss, you have to go at the very bottom of the product. So that's what we do. So we break down the structure of the product up to the raw material. If, mm -hmm. And if, if it is cardboard, what we ask the suppliers, or better, the, the, let's say the manufacturer of the cardboard, because it is directly involved, to provide is the weight of the cardboard used for that specific product, the country of origin, and all the other technical aspects which may be useful to do the calculation of the environmental profit and loss. Thank you for explaining that. That's, that's very welcome. useful. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? There are very good questions, folks. Uh, yeah. Th thank you for those for those questions. Clearly, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, give you a wrong impression. So it is not. It is not immediate. So it takes a lot of work to get there. So it's a lot of implementation and a lot of analysis because clearly you have to break it down really to the bottom. So so. But at the end of the day, it's it's it's, it's feasible and it's achievable. I, I could believe that, Luca, as uh, <laughs> yesterday, if anyone's familiar with Green Biz, they have a series of newsletters. Lisa, you may be familiar since you asked that question. Uh, they have a new newsletter, uh, basically Green Fin, I think it's called. They just started yesterday. And one of the two things that they pointed out as the top storylines are going to follow is, and Green Biz is a big sustainability uh, media organization. The two things that are, there, there are two top storylines were around uh, standards and two around data collection. 
Um, and exactly the kind of things that you guys are talking about and Alicia, you asked about and the difficulties associated with that. So uh, it's actually something uh, for those of you out there, I'm near and dear to my heart and I'm happy to talk about it. So with that, let's go back here to Luca and Marina yep. here. Yep, yep, yep. So I will click quickly move on to the um, technical side. So uh, from the beginning, our let's say there is one big concept that is behind our technology is that we did not build a gigantic system that is on top of a distributed system. So there is uh, there is no behemoth, but there is a, a different uh, technological concept that is a distributed application. So from the beginning, what we wanted to do was uh, uh, a conceptually light application that is given to every player. So suppose we have 10 companies, 50 companies collaborating, they will have their hyperledger peers, maybe not all of them, depending on the size of the company, uh, because we also enable sharing peers, which is a concept that maybe we can we can uh, discuss Luca, separately. Luca, just yeah. wait, when you, when you mentioned hyperledger, ledger, can you specify what parts of hyperledger you're using? Uh, yeah, we use fabric. Uh, okay. We we used to use in the very beginning also you may you may remember that composer that we use as a REST server, uh, right. but we later we dismissed that and we developed our own technology also in that area. So basically, we use Fabric. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Any, do you use uh, any of the other projects out of Hyperledger? Or is everything Fabric? No, we are using only Fabric at, at this point in time. We are also looking into the other uh, into the other projects at uh, this moment, but the only one that we are using in production is Fabric. And that's quite fine. Thank you. Just so okay, everyone thank has, you. has is clear in their mind what we're talking about here. Okay, thank you. And so uh, the idea was to create those uh, those uh, applications, distributed applications that we 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 give to, we provide to every company. And those applications do many things, like they do user management, they do caching, they do they manage notifications, they manage uh, the data data mapping, the data mapping layer, they manage imports and exports, they manage. Uh, um, REST APIs and, and so on. So you can think about this as a fully packaged front end and back end uh, application, which is able to speak at the same time with uh, Fabric and with uh, customers providing a web interface or web books or, uh, or APIs. And at the same time, uh, connect to GitHub for libraries uh, and clearly for the code repository, which is, <laughs> I think, quite basic, uh, uh, but also to uh, Amazon and Azure, uh, where we store the um, off-chain uh, off files, uh, which are clearly hashed and say, well, we save the hash into the blockchain, but we keep the, we keep the file outside. We integrate, with, uh, we integrate this with, uh, for example, with uh, Azure Active Directory for user management and also for the key vault and, and so on. So, so in a nutshell, this is our technology. So it's a new concept of business application that is not, uh, that is not a single large piece of software, is a lean software that is provided to each, to each company. Also the conf configuration of each application changes depending on the profile of the company. So depending on what kind of company they are, we divide them into, let's say sets or buckets of companies, depending on the typology, they will get, will also get different, different, uh, different functionalities. And clearly each company has its own uh, configuration for the, for the data layer. Okay, uh, Mari. Um, in detail, this is uh, this is what our uh, software, which we call Front, does. So it's uh, basically, as I was saying, identity management, the user and machine interface. Uh, it integrates with the uh, fabric, uh, does all the data layer, uh, manages the security, which is uh, super sophisticated, is completely proprietary. It's uh, it's based. It's completely written in chain code, and. Um, it's interesting. I mean, uh, we don't have uh, enough time today, but maybe if there is uh, another occasion we can talk in detail about how we implemented security, which is not at organization level; it is at user level. So it's uh, it's quite quite sophisticated, actually. Uh, we it also manages notifications, 
uh, because clearly when you have cross company workloads, you need to uh, let them let people know that something is, is happening because clearly it is it, a lot, lot of things happening to the blockchain. And we also, so we capture the events and we route them to the appropriate companies depending on uh, on some settings, and it does uh, the dashboarding and and the caching. I was I was mentioning uh, for the staging part of the data, which is a part of our processes. And um, uh, next slide, uh, next slide. So just to make you understand how our business model works, so maybe okay. I, I can go on with that, Marie, if you are okay with that. Okay, I think she is. Uh, basically, this is a this is yeah. This is uh, the way we work on on the business uh, on the business side. So there is a cloud subscription for the software. Uh, nothing is uh, companies and uh, don't have to install anything, even if we support uh, hybrid scenarios. So if if someone is uh, is very eager to have his software in the data center, it is it is possible. Uh, we provide professional services, uh, clearly for developing the business case. Uh, and the business scenario design for process design and so on. Uh, we provide support, uh, which is very important because uh, because as we see that when the networks tend to extend, users need a lot of lot of assistance. Um, just just maybe for autos or for small bug fixing and so on. And another thing that we do is uh, is run uh, the applications because what we saw is that most of the companies really. Um, do not want so much to run uh, to run uh, uh, Hyperledger or to run our instance of the system. So we help them run running those uh, those systems in their cloud or in their cloud uh, in their cloud subscriptions. Yeah, just to, to say about uh, uh, cloud subscription that uh, cost depends on how how big the company is. Why? Um, this because we want to allow also uh, small companies to be part of this uh, supply chain uh, let's say, revolution. And it's obvious that they don't have the same wallet for IT projects as uh, big multinational companies. So that's why uh, this cost depends on, on, uh, uh, on how big the company is in the supply chain. Yep. And so just uh, so, so, I, uh, uh, so almost the end of the, of the presentation. So a few, uh, few remarks. Um, um, next slide. So uh, why we think, I mean, we have a good value proposition. Uh, first of all, I mean, um, this is not a custom, custom development. So we have created a product that we uh, enhance, improve and evolve on, on a daily basis. So I think there is a lot of value with this. So companies know that they are not embarking into something that would become very difficult to maintain in time because the software is constantly managed and improved by us. Um, we, uh, we also help companies uh, manage their risk because we have uh, success stories. So we know how to help small and big companies managing this type of, this type of situation. Um, and also, uh, we also, we think we can also avoid that dance because we have seen many situations where uh, there are complexities which may lead to project failures. Uh, like mentioning, I like would like to mention a few of them, like reasonable UI and UX. So the application has to be usable, has to be fast. You need to provide the tools that the users need to work on a daily basis, like Excel integration. That is so important, like filtering, like sorting, like uh, uh, being able to personalize the dashboards in the way that, that are uh, convenient for them like security, which is super important as to be super, uh, super detailed so that everybody can see only what they are allowed to see. Performance, which is uh, at the same time very important. So we have developed an entire proprietary layer so that when we provide data, so when our application reads data, it does not read directly from, uh, from Fabric, but is reading from a cache stage, from a cache layer which is helping a lot in terms of performance and is also floating the blockchain from a workload that is not necessary. Like also uh, studying, but this is clearly, I think uh, pretty, pretty understandable for everybody, doing a good design of the blockchain node architecture. So making it, uh, making it uh, reasonable and making sure that the software is, uh, 
is stable and that integration works, that uh, uh, the vocabulary is, uh, is, uh, is clear for everybody. And also because our company is reliable, we've been uh, pretty successful so far and we have investors who have trusted us and have provided the funds to be sure that we can, we can be resilient over time and we can also be resilient for, for our customers. Okay. Our presentation so, is finished. Thank you a lot for your attention, for being here and seeing our solution and our ideas. Great, Marina and Luca, thank you. This was very good. I uh, appreciate you sharing also uh, some of the ideas here. I have a quick question here. Uh, maybe if you could describe, let's take the carry example since you've talked about that. How did, was this kind of a top down? They kind of said, hey, suppliers, you need to get on board with this. Or was it more of a holistic type of let's work together type of thing? And then that kind of gets into the question, how many nodes are there? How are they doing the governance of the, the set of chains there? Yeah. Okay. Um, Antonio, uh, I will give you the first part of. of um, okay. Good. Thanks. Uh, I think that is really unrealistic to think that people like fifteen companies will say, "Oh, let's work together." Uh, it's sort of. I can dream, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but things uh, can start also um, slowly, easily, just with a couple companies, and then. That's the power of this uh, of this solution that uh, it's so flexible. So you can you can in every moment you can add other companies, add other suppliers. Uh, so it's not necessary to to start together. Uh, actually, maybe is mm, more efficient to start one by one, just adding one reality after after other, and um, it just changed. Um, some processes, but it's it's so easy easy to add or to to just uh, cut some some of these uh, companies. Okay, and good. So it kind of kind of started started from caring, and then it kind of expanded out, is what you're saying. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, okay. Maybe maybe look uh, will be better on this yeah. English. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is a, this is exactly the, a good explanation. It started from caring, and then it spread out. And clearly, smaller companies in the beginning were having, uh, let's say, more and more time understanding the the benefits. Uh, but then they they gradually understood uh, in the course of action because they were they were actually understanding that their own, uh, let's say, internal systems and processes were not so, let's say, uh, robust, and that uh, uh, that was a great uh, opportunity to implement to improve them. Uh, some of them DAOs are also using the solution as a document management system because some smaller companies didn't have any, any of that. So it's uh, so simple now for that. Suppose you have a, a supplier uploading a catalog of uh, metal components like, uh, I don't know, uh, something in metal like screws uh, or anything like that. It becomes very easy to use the system to aggregate all the, all the documents and the information for that. Um, and then, Tom, I apologize, I, I apologize, but I forgot what was the second part of the question. N number of nodes in the uh, implementation. Uh, yes, uh, this is a great question. So now we're running with five nodes of Fabric. So there are three nodes for the most important companies. One is for the certification authority, and one is a shared node. And we, we use this uh, concept of share nodes uh, because, uh, because clearly we have implemented a very strong security layer in our application. Uh, on top of that, that is, as I was saying, as is anyway written into the blockchain. So it's not, it's not easy to, let's say, go around it because all the rules are written into the, into the chain code. And so we use the concept of, uh, of uh, share nodes in order to, let's say, um, Avoid uh, avoid uh, a, a growth of the of the network that is too costly okay. for the for the companies. Okay, good. Thanks. And uh, um, Luca, you you mentioned uh, certification first uh, about like a, a plus for a company. For example, we have Dice in this uh, consortium, and uh, they are they are um, producing lens. 
Okay, you can imagine what, what it means for a, a company to have the possibility to ask a certification for every single land, land uh, just on, on, their, or our, on our system without PDF, without mails, without, you know, because a lot of times, as in for, for, uh, for example, um, for American, um, uh, for American, for the American uh, market. Market. Yes. market, yes, uh, they need to provide uh, this uh, bullet uh, test. This is a special um, testing where the metal bullet um, um, is f falling uh, on, on, on land. Lens. And, yes, on lens, and, in, and if uh, this lens uh, remains uh, whole, they can sell this, uh, this hardware uh, in America. So many, many times they, they needed to, to uh, make uh, another test because they lost that that certification or they don't remember who managed that or sometimes uh, there is no anymore the person who worked on that type of uh, certification and you lose all the documentation so for for them they 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 understood that there are a lot of plus for them that's why companies uh, wanted to to be part of this uh, uh, of this um, um, ledger and, and uh, ecosystem. Good, thank you. What other questions out there, folks? From uh, we're coming to, we're coming to the top of the hour, so yep. get your questions in. Anybody? Okay. Well, hearing none, uh, I think we'll, we'll stop here a little bit beforehand, but that, that's great. Uh, Marina and Luca, thank you very much for the presentation. I, I see uh, Kevin's thoughts and I see Ben's thoughts here in the chat that uh, liked the session here, said great session. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks for sharing with yeah. us. Uh, the folks that are on the phone here, uh, please take a look at my email from a little bit earlier to the uh, to the, to the SIG uh, email server. Basically, hey, we're, we're still looking for input on where do we focus this group here for the new year here, 2021. Uh, that was the subject of the last call. And Mark and I are looking for your input to decide where we're going to go in addition to doing webinars like this one here. So with that, uh, thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, uh, whatever it looks like weather-wise in your place. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you again a couple weeks from now. Thanks, everybody. Sure. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, buddy. Thank you. Have a nice day. You also. I will now post share stuff here. Yay.